a very good morning uh, to you all uh, dear brethren around the world greetings of uh, peace and joy to all in the name of our uh, almighty god and a return and a reigning king lord uh, jesus christ i bring uh, love and greetings of many brethren from uh, india i thank uh, our lord <clears throat> for giving me the opportunity to serve his flock and also the convention committee for giving me an opportunity to serve the brethren today our study is based on the topic the sealing of the servants of god before the plagues come upon babylon this is particularly based on the writing of our beloved brother charles stays russell third volume thy kingdom come chapter 6 <clears throat> title the work of the harvest by god's grace we would be see how this uh, would suit the conditions today i would like to present this as a suggestion before all the saints to ponder upon first of all we will read the third volume of uh, studies in the scriptures page uh, 165 166 and uh, 167 but now as the millennial morning dawns and the doctrinal errors of dark night past are discovered and the real gems of truth are lightened up the effect must be as uh, designed to separate completely the wheat from the tares and as false doctrines produce improper development so the unfolding of truth in the light of harvest will produce the separation all of the tares and some of the wheat are fearful however to them it seems that the dissolution of babylon would be the overthrow of god's work and the failure of his cause but not so the tares never wear wheat and god never purposed to recognize them as such he merely permitted let them both grow together until the harvest it is from babylon's cage of unclean birds that god's people are called out that they may both enjoy the liberty and share the harvest light and work and prove themselves out of harmony with their errors of doctrine and practice and thus escape them and their reward the plagues coming upon all remaining in her these plagues or troubles foreshadowed in the troubles upon the rejected jewish house are pictured in such lurid symbols in the book of revelation that many students have very exaggerated and wild ideas on this subject and are therefore unprepared for the realities now closely impending they often interpret the symbols literally and hence are unprepared to see them fulfilled as they will be by religious social and political disturbances controversies appeals reactions revolutions etc but note another item here between the time when babylon is cast off 
falls from favor in 1878 and a time when the plagues or troubles come upon her is a brief interval during which the Lord's faithful of the Lord's people are all to be informed on this subject and gathered out of Babylon. This is clearly shown in the same verse. For with the message, Babylon is fallen, is coupled the call, come out of her, my people, that ye receive not of her coming plagues. This same interval of time and the same work to be accomplished in it are also referred to in symbol in Revelation 7.3. To the messenger of wrath, the command is given, heard not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, until we have sealed the servant of our God in their foreheads. The forehead sealing indicates that a mental <laughs> comprehension of the truth will be the mark or seal which will separate and distinguish the servants of God from the servants and votaries of Babylon. And this agrees with Daniel's testimony. The wise of thy people shall understand, but none of the wicked, unfaithful to their covenant, shall understand. Thus the classes are to be marked <clears throat> and separated before the plagues come upon rejected cast off Babylon. And that this knowledge is to be both a sealing and a separating agent is clearly implied in the verse before considered. For the declaration is first made that Babylon is fallen and that certain plagues or punishments are coming upon her. Before the Lord's people are expected to obey the command, come out. Based upon that knowledge, indeed, we know that all must be well sealed in their foreheads. Intelligently informed concerning God's plan before they can rightly appreciate or obey His command. And it is not apparent that this very work of sealing the servants of God is now progressing. Are we not being sealed in our foreheads? And that too, at a very proper time, are we not being led <clears throat> step by step as by the Lord's own hand, by His words to an appreciation of truth and affairs in general from His standpoint? Reversing our former opinions derived from other sources, on many subjects, is not the true that the various divisions or sects of Babylon have not been the channels through which this ceiling has come to us, but rather that they have been hindrances which prevented its speedier accomplishment. And do we not see the propriety of it, as well as of the Lord's declaration that uh, a separation of wheat and tares must occur in the harvest? And do we not see it to be his plan to reveal the facts to his faithful and then to expect them to show their hearty sympathy with that plan by prompt obedience, what if to obey and to come out 
obliges us to leave behind the praise of men or a comfortable salary or a personage home or financial aids uh, in business or domestic peace or what not. Yes, let us not fear. He who says to us, come, is the same who said, come to Peter when he walked on the sea. Peter, in obeying, would have sunk, had not the Lord's outstretched arm upheld him, and the same arm supports them well, who now, at his command, come out of Babylon. Look not at the boisterous sea of difficulties between, but look directly to the Lord, be of a good courage. The command is come, not go, because in coming out of bondage to human traditions and creeds and systems and errors, we are coming directly to our Lord, to be taught and fed by Him, to be strengthened and perfected, to do all His pleasure and to stand and not to fall with Babylon. God's words reveal the fact that the nominal church, after its fall from His favor, and from being his mouthpiece, Revelation 3.16, will gradually settle into a condition of unbelief in which the Bible will eventually be entirely ignored. In fact, though retained in name and in which philosophical speculations of various shades will be the real creeds. From this fall, the faithful sealed ones will escape, for they will be accounted worthy of escape, to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand, not fall, in the time of the Lord's presence. Luke 21.36 Thus, in God's plan, a selection is made during the gospel age of individuals worthy of the high honor of being promised seed of Abraham and joined us with Messiah in the promised kingdom, which would lift up and bless all the families of the earth. Galatians 3. 16, 27 to 29, and verse 14. But in this work of harvest, <clears throat> all are not uh, the ripe wheat. There is yet uh, a great multitude which uh, no man can number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Revelation 7, 9 We should be careful, lest at any time we think that we stand, take heed, lest we fall, or hold fast that which we have, that no man take our crown. 1 Corinthians 10 chapter verse 12 and Revelation 3 11. So then let us see how we need to be careful from losing our crown and what is that makes it to be the great multitude rather than the faithful little flock. For this we will consider some of the examples that God has given us in the Bible. Esau and Jacob. 
These were the sons of the same father, Isaac, and the same mother, Rebecca. Both were twin twins. Esau was the firstborn, and Jacob was born a few seconds later. Being the firstborn, Esau had the birthright, which means he had the advantage of having a double portion of their father's property. But ultimately, <clears throat> Jacob got all the blessings. How Esau returned from hunting and was very angry, and Jacob was preparing some meal. He requested Jacob to give that meal because he was much tired and hungry. And Jacob made a deal with him. I am going to give this meal only if you are going to sell me the birthright. So Esau thought, what use be of this birthright? And carelessly sold the birthright for a meal. But later Esau realized his mistake. And try to regain that birthright, but unfortunately he could not get it. Let us read Hebrews twelve chapter sixteen and seventeen. Lest uh, <clears throat> there be any fornicator or profane person, as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright, for you know. How afterward he would have inherited the blessings he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with uh, tears. Esau couldn't uh, undo what was done, even though he sought it with tears <clears throat> and was rejected. Even so, dear brethren, we should not be careless in the blessings which God has given us, the double portion, the heavenly salvation on the divine nature. Everyone in this world is going to get the blessings of eternal life. But the church is promised double. Double means not only just eternal life, but a immortal life. The nature that our heavenly father himself is having. As a little flock, we should be ready to sacrifice and lay all things to attain this price. Jacob was ready to become a pauper just to attain the Abrahamic promise. This is one of the differences between the little flock and the great multitude. The one voluntarily laying down all things for Christ's sake, but the other holding back the sacrifice until asked by God. Hence, Apostle Paul clearly warns us that we should be on guard lest any man fail of the grace of God, <laughs> lest any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Hebrews 12, chapter 15, verse. The second is the king, queen, and, uh, and com our companions. Another example is given to us in Psalms 45th chapter where Jesus is the king and uh, the church uh, is the queen. King's daughter were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did uh, stand the queen in gold of a fear. Psalms 45 9. The king's uh, Daughter is uh, among honorable women. At the right hand of chief favor, sitting on the throne next to him, 
even as he also overcame and is set down with his father on his throne. She is completely covered with gold. What is the meaning of gold in the Bible? Gold in the Bible represents the divine nature that God himself has. The church will be decked and be granted the divine nature <clears throat> which God himself is having. To qualify to become the queen of the king, what should the queen do? It is given in verse 10 and 11. Yerkan, O daughter, and consider and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire the beauty. For he is thy lord <clears throat> and worship though him. The king, oh. the king shall greatly desire her beauty. Only when she is ready to first the way he treats. and forget her uh, father's uh, house and own people. Now, what is this forsaking father's house and own people? Our original father was Father Adam. His house is earth. One who is to be part of the heavenly salvation must forget this world. All their earthly rights are to be laid on the altar in exchange for the heavenly one. The people of the world should be forgotten. Only God's household of faith should be considered as their divine family. How is the daughter? Let us read verse 13. It says, the king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of wrought gold. The queen is glorious within means that her beauty of character is not one which is outwardly, but which is inward. She is glorious within. For it is no longer she that liveth, but Christ that liveth in her. Christ is saying this inward beauty of Christ likeness in all what to be part of his uh, parade. Verse 14 tells, She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. Her robe is full of needle embroidery work. How is the embroidery done? It is not so easy. The robe is poked with needle numerous times. Then only a beautiful embroidery happens. Similarly, if we need to develop the divine fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, it is a painful process. It takes lot of efforts. <clears throat> Nothing magic happens here. It is through much tribulation that we enter the kingdom of God. But that is our king will desire our beauty. The more embroidery work and glorious decoration, that shows the more we love the Lord above everything. Verse 14 and 15 continues to tell, The virgin, her companions, that follower, shall be brought unto thee. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought they shall enter into the king's palace <clears throat> along with the queen. There are companions. Sir. They will be brought in with gladness and rejoicing. They will enter 
द किंग्स पैलेस वो आर दिस वर्जिन आर कंपेनियंस दीज आर द ग्रेट मल्टीट्यूड वो लैक देर रोब ऑफ क्राइस्ट राइटसनेस टू बी डेकोरेटेड विथ गोल्ड एंड नीडल वर्क ऑफ फ्रूट्स ऑफ द होली स्प्रिट एंस दे कान बी ऑफ द ब्राइट क्लास बट एट द दे शेल एंटर द किंग्स प्लेस अटेन हेवन सेल्वेशन on angelic plane stand before the throne instead of sitting on the throne dear brethren we need to develop a christ likeness and remain faithful to god until death the wise and the foolish virgins another example is the wise and the foolish virgins Do you remember the parable where Jesus told about the wise and the foolish virgins? Matthew twenty fifth chapter. Let us read from verses one to four. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise; five were foolish. they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps <clears throat> out of 10 virgins who went out to meet the bridegroom five of them were foolish and five were wise the foolish ones took oil only in their lamps but not in the vessel while the wise ones took oil in their lamps and the vessels this was what that separated the wise virgins from the foolish virgins so what happened when the bridegroom came all went to meet the bridegroom the wise virgins had oil sufficient to keep their lamps burning but the foolish due to a lack of oil could not keep their lamps uh, burning and hence uh, they requested uh, the wise virgins uh, to give a little bit uh, of their oil was said to 10 and the fool is said unto wise give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out but the wise answered saying not so lest there be not enough for us and you but you go rather to them that sell and buy for yourself and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut who are these uh, virgins <clears throat> it is the church we are the virgins who are exposed to one man jesus christ waiting for the lord Second Corinthians eleven two. What is the meaning of lamp in the Bible? For the Bible, Bible is its own dictionary. We have to search the scriptures here a little, there a little. The lamp in the Bible means God's words. Psalm one hundred nineteen one hundred five. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. what does oil mean in the bible in olden days oil was used for anointing king and priest so oil in the bible represents uh, the holy spirit the holy spirit is not not there in the lamp the bible but that holy spirit should be not only in the bible but uh, it should be within us the spirit of consecration 
the spirit of the lord the fruits of the holy spirit the foolish virgins did not develop these fruits of holiness and of christ likeness when christ came to gather his church they were not prepared therefore they were told to go to the world and buy oil buy the world because that is the place where oil is sold now who sells the holy spirit it is our god our god is the owner of it he sells the holy spirit and doesn't give it free we need to pay for it and buy that means it should cost us something that is what the bible calls sacrifice only if we dedicate and sacrifice that which is precious to us that god gives us his holy spirit therefore the seller is god so we need to make a lot of sacrifice <clears throat> and be spent in the lord's work not just pay tithes but offer our bodies as a living sacrifice a whole burnt offering then only god will fill us with the holy spirit to that extent by the time the great multitude go to the world and develop the spirit of consecration and christ likeness and return the door will be closed hence just being a virgin is not sufficient we should be wise virgins being a dow is good but that is not sufficient to get us the reward of the divine nature hence they can't be of the little flock gideon and his band of uh, 300 another example of gideon and his band of 300 through whom god gave victory over the midianites when the midianites came to attack israel the people of israel cried to lord and then god called gideon to fight against the midianites who were 120000 in number when the call was given to the people of israel to fight 32000 responded but god saw the number was too large lest any boast that it was through their might that they had won the battle and god said to gideon to announce that who so ever is fearful to fight let them return home and so 22000 went back while only 10000 remained was two and three the lord said unto gideon the people that are with you are too many for me to give the midianites <clears throat> into their hands lest israel want themselves against me saying my own and as saved me now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people saying whosoever is fearful and afraid let him return and depart early from mount gilead and they returned of the people 20 and 2000 and they remained 10000 <clears throat> god said even this 10000 is too much so bring them to the water their god will test and tell who will go to war and do will not go to war so gideon called everybody to the water and told them to drink it what happened is given to us in verse 5 and 6 so he brought down the people unto the water 
And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that bowed down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. Those who lapped with their tongue like a dog <clears throat> were uh, set apart and the number of them was 300. But all the rest of the people knelt down, putting their mouth directly to the water, were 9,700. God rejected this 9,700, selecting only the 300. And it is through this 300 that God gave the victory. How did God give the victory? No swords were used. No spears were used. No bow or arrow were used. But they were just told to carry two things. A trumpet to blow and a lamp hidden in a pitcher. To break the pitcher, let the light shine. And the three companions blew the trumpet and break the pitchers and held the lamps in the left hand and the trumpets in the right hand to blow with all. And they cried the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. They did these three things. Broke the mud pitcher, let the light shine blew the trumpet and shouted loudly the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. By the time they shouted and went down, the war was over. And all the host cried and fled. So what does all this mean? Gideon had a fight with the Midianites, the enemies of Israel. Similarly, we as spiritual Israel have warfare with our enemies. For we wrestle not against uh, flesh and blood, but against uh, principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, uh, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6.12 Spiritual uh, wickedness uh, in high places is the Satan and the fallen angels. How do you fight these invisible enemies? Jesus said, if anybody wants to be my disciple, let him deny himself, follow me, take up the cross. As soon as the call was given, what happened? How many people came in? 32,000 people came, not one or two. A very large crowd of 32,000 people came ready to fight. But when God told whoever is frightened to go to battle may return to their homes, what happened? 22,000 people returned and only 10,000 people remem remained. <clears throat> Remember what Jesus said, Matthew 22, 14, that many are called, few are chosen. 32,000 people were invited, but in that only 10,000 were chosen who were ready to stand for the Lord and fight for his cause. The 22,000 returned back as are the good believers of this world. They are not the followers of Christ. They just want to be good believing Christians. Believing Lord Jesus Christ, that's all. They don't offer themselves as living sacrifice to the Lord. They want only blessings and miracles from the Lord. Once the Lord tells you can go back, they were ready to go back into the world, which means they will be in the Lord as well as in the world a neutral people, neither hot nor cold. What did God tell to Gideon? 
This is not the chosen group. This is too much. Bring them to the water to test them. What does water mean in the Bible? Water is referred as God's word. Habakkuk 2.14 For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. The people are brought to the truth and tested. How the people receive the truth matters. Some people are not interested at all. Simply they listen, they put their heads down completely. They just drink it for satisfaction, nothing else. These are the Christians who are not interested in the Bible. They just attend prayers only for satisfaction but are not really interested in the Lord. These are not really God's children. But the 300 filtered the dust and everything in the water. They cleanly checked the word of God, remained very alert, studied very attentively, <clears throat> listened and made notes, asked questions, tried to understand each and everything. They drank the water assimilated, digest the truth and understand what was being taught to them. This is the character of the little flock. The people of Israel were like this. They just listen and put nothing into practice. What does the Bible say about them? Romans 10, 2 and 3. It tells, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, <clears throat> going to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted unto the righteousness of God. The Lord rejected them similarly to the great multitude who don't show much interest in following God's words are rejected. Therefore, Apostle Paul tells to study, to show thyself approved. A workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. With these 300, God gave them the victory. They had only two things, one trumpet and a lamp inside the earthen vessel. What is this earthen vessel? This is the old nature, inside which is the lamp <clears throat> the new creature begotten by God's Holy Spirit. What uh, were the words of Apostle Paul? Quench not the Spirit, grieve not the Spirit, and be filled with the Spirit. Which means the Holy Spirit is present in this old creature. 2 Corinthians 4 7. But you have this treasure in the earthen vessel. That the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. They were told to blow the trumpet of truth, break this picture of old creature and let the lamp of new creature shine, which is in the image of Christ. What did Jesus say in Matthew 5.16? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. If the light has to shine, then this old nature, the old man character, has to be destroyed, <clears throat> or else it is impossible to bring glory to God. Along with this, we need to blow the trumpet of truth. It is not sufficient that we are good behaved before all, we need to witness this truth to as many as possible and not selfishly keep the truth to ourselves. Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9.16 <clears throat> For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yeah, who is unto me if I preach not the gospel? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, 
making oh. the simple. The status of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the hearts, the government of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Psalms 19, 7 and 8. Are we witnessing the truth to others? Are we proclaiming this truth? Are we blowing this trumpet to as many Christians as we meet in our path? Are we witnessing about God's kingdom to them? Are we witnessing the thousand year reign of Christ <clears throat> when everyone will come back to this earth and live a loving life with a family? Are we witnessing that there are two types of salvation, heavenly <clears throat> and earthly? Think about the joy we received when we first heard the truth. If those brethren had not witnessed to us, would we be the same today? Witnessing makes a lot of difference. There are a lot of broken-hearted people who long for love. We need to use this balm to comfort them. The little flock is glad to do, do this and lay all their possessions on the altar of the Lord, casting the bread upon the waters, leaving the results for the Lord. For those shall find it after many days. Ecclesiastes 11.1 1. But the great multitude lacks this boldness, courage, <clears throat> zeal and think, Oh, who will witness the truth? Who will listen to the truth if you tell? I don't have the talent. Why simply waste time? If it is God's will, they will anyhow come. They are much worried about their name, reputation and don't want to face shame for the Lord's sake. Remember what Jesus said, Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father who is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father who is in heaven. This attitude is what separates the little flock from the great uh, multitude. If we are faithful in such uh, little things, then dear brethren, there is no need for us to worry about our battle with our enemies. There is no need for us to do anything, <clears throat> no need to fight. God will fight for us. The band of 300 didn't fight at all. By the time they reached the battlefield, the battle was over. The enemies had fought among themselves and Israel just went to gather the prey. God defeated them in the same way he will defeat all our enemies. With such a wonderful cloud of witness before us, let us boldly walk ahead in our consecrated way and finish our course victoriously. Let us all pray to God that we may remain faithful to Him in the coming days and be part of the little flock. May the Lord add His blessings to the understanding of His holy words. I once again thank my only Father, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for giving me this opportunity and the brethren for giving me the opportunity to serve his flock. I also thank the translator brethren for doing the translation in uh, different languages. If anyone has any questions, uh, they can WhatsApp or email to me. God bless all till we meet again. Amen. Thank you, dear brother Raju, for a wonderful discourse. Uh, I believe men have been blessed by God's grace. And uh, I thank our Heavenly Father for the wonderful internet connection that he has granted us. At this moment, we shall have our hymn, hymn 149. And after that, Brother Raju, we will ask for a blessing.
the thanksgiving that is prayer upon your discourse that you've just given us and we shall have an opportunity for the brethren to ask questions in relation to the discourse that our dear brother Raju has just shared with us. So at this moment, we are going to have our hymn, and after that, uh, we shall have a prayer by Brother Raju. Just a minute. Just a minute, just to play him. Sorry about that, I'm just trying to play the hymn here. Brother Raju, over to you. <clears throat> Let us bow down our heads uh, in a word of prayer. Our most uh, gracious, uh, precious, uh, ever loving Father, great God uh, Almighty, the creator of this uh, universe, uh, the creator of all the beautiful things in it. Heavenly Father, we come to the throne of grace and mercy at this moment and we thank you for still counting us among the living, for giving us uh, yet another day to prove our faithfulness unto thee. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful plan of the ages which thou hast made for the whole mankind and especially for us, though we are unworthy, you have been merciful and gracious towards us in giving the opportunity to be partakers of the divine nature and to walk in the footsteps of our dear Master, Heavenly Father, Help us to walk worthy of the calling and not receive the grace in vain. Help us to 
count the price of the heavenly salvation precious above everything give us the strength and energy to lay our little all upon the altar we thank you for the wonderful robe which thou hast given us help us to embroider it with a christ likeness we thank you for all the tribulations and the trials which thou hast given us in our life we know lord that all these things are for our good help us to develop the desired characters in all these things even as we see the day is fast approaching help us to scrutinize ourselves and live a life which is uh, pleasing in thy sight we also pray for the many brethren who are gathering all over the world under different circumstances who are also going uh, undergoing trials and other uh, matters we pray that uh, thy grace thy mercy the divine hand may be upon them and uh, then give them the strength and necessary mercy and grace to walk uh, in this nerve walk of life and finish the glow finish the course uh, thus bringing praises to your name we especially thank you for the brethren who organized today's uh, meeting bless them lord that they may be also a blessing to other brethren in the coming days sir we pray all these things in one the name of lord and savior jesus christ name we pray amen thank you brother raju uh brethren we can use this session to ask questions in relation to the discourse that our dear brother has given us uh you can raise your hands and uh brother raju will be selecting so brethren you feel free to interact and uh, ask any question in relation to the discourse good morning mudarik Well, good evening. Oh, God bless you too. This is Brother Granton uh, from Kenya. Good morning, we'll Brother Granton. Talk. Oh wait, Granton, Granton Otieno from Kenya. God bless you. God bless, brother. Uh, we are uh, together. Uh, we, we are listening together with uh, another brother here. Is called Mister Manase. So we are two. Hi, Brother Manase. Yes, we are with Brother Manase. So we have learned a lot, and may God strengthen you to continue. I mean, this nourishment, so that we may grow towards the near future coming kingdom of God. So thank you very much. Well, thank the Lord. Brother, thank you. Thank you. you. God bless. Thank you. God bless. Brother Raju, it's a joy to see you and hear you and thank you for your good lesson. Thank you, brother. It's a joy to see everybody also and especially you also. Give our loving greetings to Sister Usha. Sure, brother. And Joshua. Yeah, they both are doing good, brother, by God's grace. Joshua's eye is improving. Yeah, he's improving, brother. Now he's uh, almost normal. So we need to go to the checkup uh, only in the next year. Very good. Thank the Lord for that. Yeah, brother. Sure. Uh, brother Jorisha, I have to take the time to say hello to you and Sister Mary. Yes. Uh, hello. Hello, brother Rick. Good to see you. All the brethren. Yes. Yeah, good to see you too, and brother Very Dunn. Good. Yes. <laughs> So I, I, I don't have a question, Brother Raju, per se. I thought you presented your thoughts clearly and thoroughly. I appreciate it very much. I just wanted to take a moment to take the opportunity to greet you know, 
all the brethren that are, are joining on. And uh, like you, we want to thank Brother Miro for presenting the opportunity. Well, thank you, Brother. You have relieved me of my tension. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I was wondering how to answer your question. <laughs> no, no. No question. Just, just rejoicing. Oh, thank you. So, how is sister, our brother in doing there? Everyone's well, by the grace of God. The usual Adam-itis inherited aches and pains of the fallen flesh. Oh. <laughs> that remains as we get older. In, in, indeed. But closer to home. Yeah. <laughs> That's of course. Thank you. I think Brother John. John, brother, do you have any questions? Brother Godwin is there. Hi, Brother Raju. <clears throat> I have a question, but I wanted to come online and uh, greet you. It's so nice to see you and <laughs> thank you for the message. Uh, it was definitely a refresher. I'm sure many benefited from that. So thank you for presenting. Thank you, it's, Brother Godwin. It's a joy to see you. How is your health? So doing much better. Back to normal. Thank God. Good. Uh, Good. Uh, so, so send her. Up. Yeah, mom's back in India. So oh, she's she's. she's okay. Okay. Good. Okay, please send so, my love to Sister Rosha and brother uh, and, and Joshua as well. Sure, brother. Sure. Any questions? Thank you. No questions. I, I'm good. Thank you. No questions. Okay. Okay, brother John. But John, do you have any questions, brother? Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to thank our dear brother for the message. His message is very clear, and uh, I really enjoy it. And uh, I, I will first of all thank brother Dolan, who I think yesterday gave me the the link. I don't know how it will be if I have if I miss this uh, this uh, topic because I've been hearing about about it, but I have not received any message from him. But today is a great opportunity for me to you know hear from him. I've been hearing about him from the Indian brethren. But I thank God that today I heard him speak. So very interesting. Topic. Yeah, you have covered a lot of topics. Very interesting. So I wish uh, maybe if uh, I may have another opportunity to review this uh, discourse, I will, I will so much appreciate it. So thank you so much, my dear brother. Appreciate the discourse. Thank you. Uh, we thank the Lord for it, brother. It is a lot. Uh who gives a meat in due season uh, through his stewards. So uh, we are much grateful for our Lord, for his abundance of mercy, for giving us these breadcrumbs from his table to feed his dear brethren. Uh, I've shared the discourse on the chat. Uh, so anybody who would like to use it, they can use it. Uh, so we praise God for it. Thank you. Brother Raju, I'm going to jump in and say, in the chat, you have direct message. So I don't know that it went to the whole group. Oh, sorry, brother. I, so please. I, I'll do it yeah. again. Yeah. Um, okay. Now it's for everybody. Did it, did it went publicly? Did everybody receive the discourse? Yes, brother. We can see it. Yep. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> okay, brother Eva. Eva, brother, you, do you have any questions? Brother Eduja? Ja bi isto da zahvalim na divnom predavanju. Sister Eva wants to uh, give he, her uh, thankfulness for the wonderful discourse and she sent her greetings to all and she is uh, pleased with the example uh, about the lamp that, that we 
all have a spirit in the lamps but it's important to have not only in the lamps but in ourselves she understand that well that we must that we must be alive by god's word it is very fascinating to me how great example great 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 lesson for her she is very grateful for that thank you so much for wonderful discourse brother raju from sister eva she said eva is fr from our ecclesia here uh, thank you you uh, definitely i'll convey mm -hmm. your regards and love to all the brother here uh, so lord knows our weakness so that it is a fragile vessel but at uh, in that one we need to try to maintain as much as uh, christ likeness that is possible from us he always sees our intention so definitely god will give us his uh, uh, mercy and grace to <clears throat> help us to overcome all this. Uh, uh, thank you, sister. Uh, Brother Dan. Brother, good morning. Good morning, you. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, brother. And, and thank you for the wonderful lesson. We uh, really enjoyed it and uh, very happy to hear that uh, your son Joshua is, is doing much better. And I just wanted to comment on, uh, on the graphics that you uh, provide, uh, provided for the, uh, the discourse, I, I find them very helpful. And, and I just noticed too behind you, the uh, the chart of the ages where you have the uh, tabernacle uh, in the Jewish age, which is, uh, I think uh, that's very helpful in, in the uh, original chart. It's off to the right of the uh, third dispensation, but it uh, makes it uh, clear the uh, uh, you know the holy and the most holy and uh, lined up to the uh, the planes of life so that's very helpful and and I just wanted to say uh, when it comes to um, the graphics that that when you uh, send out your reports that brother Rick shares with us we really enjoy them they're very thorough and and the and the pictures uh really help us to enter into uh the harvest work that you're doing and uh even my grandchildren uh enjoy them and i can tell them the story if you will of of uh where you're at and what you're doing so uh we do remember you in our prayers and we we appreciate your example of of service and and zeal for the lord uh, and it goes along very well with the lesson you just taught. Uh, may the Lord continue to add his blessing, Brother Raju. Uh, thank you, Brother Dan. Uh, my sister Usha, uh, she met you when you came to India for the first time. And uh, she was very young. I think probably she might be four years or five years old. And she remembers you. And uh, at that time, I was not in the truth at all. So uh, we thank you. Uh, appreciate you for uh, all your uh, encouraging words. Uh, 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 the the way which uh, I thought of uh, presenting the truth of, uh, since the day when I came to the truth uh, was a very pictorial way because uh, I thought my speech is not so perfect. So other way to carry forward my message to others so that it can reach them, I thought uh, the pictorial representation would be a better matter. And uh, using this technology, so Lord has blessed it and it has been useful to many brethren. So uh, it is all of his uh, uh, mercy and his grace. The knowledge has increased. So he has given us the privilege to uh, use this as a medium to uh, share it to the brethren. So I thank the Lord for it, brother. Brother Raju, they say a picture paints a thousand words. So I think that that fits well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The picture speaks more than a uh, thousand words, correct.
Okay. Uh, okay then, brother. Anybody, any questions or uh, over to brother Ivan? It seems uh, nobody has any other question to ask. Meanwhile, I want to thank God for the wonderful internet connection and for the wonderful discourse and for all the brethren who have attended. Uh, also, I want to thank the hosts, uh, Croatia Bible students, for hosting us and uh, feasting in these wonderful truths. At this moment, allow me hand over to Brother Miro, slave. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Jarisha. And thank you all, brethren, for uh, your uh, attendance today on this, uh, our uh, regular one month. Last Sunday, every month, we have these international meetings. And uh, Lord willing, uh, we'll see you next month on the last Sunday. We will provide the... Uh, hopefully a <laughs> correct link this time <laughs> with all uh, inf needful informations and Lord willing, everything will be okay according to his will, of course. And we are praying for you and for the harvest to be accomplished in Lord's due time and uh, also our char uh, character to be crystallized also in due time that we can be ready for our change when it will be a time for that and be together uh, with our Lord and uh, around the Father's throne in that blessed throne room and so forth and uh, work with the Lord Jesus in the uh, millennium or in the mediatorial phase of the kingdom and afterwards in the ages to come. Lord bless you all, dear brethren and sisters and uh, Lord be with you till we be again. Bye, Good everybody. Bless, Lord brother, bless. and good to see all of you. Brother, bless you.